Welcome back everyone. This is the first video that I'm shooting for my new shop. It'll be a lot of videos in the future on how I set up my shop and what it's going to look like. First thing we need to do, upgrade this thing. So the first step is just getting everything unboxed and this stuff is protected with paper and a lot of oil so just be ready with a rag to wipe down all of these cast iron pieces. They're all super heavy duty, very heavy, machined perfectly and arrived in perfect condition. Here you can see the packaging for all the bolts and screws that will go into putting this saw together and it even comes with some of the tools you need which is really nice. The instructions are super detailed so far and even show you how to stand your saw stop up once you get it out of the packaging. So far the instructions have been really easy to follow. The first step is installing these wheels here. You just open the package, screw this on with a 14 millimeter wrench. There's a little key that goes into the shaft and then a set screw that comes with some thread lock pre put on it that you tighten with the three millimeter Allen wrench that was provided with the kit. So you put the elevation control there and the angle control on the side. The next part of the process is installing this dust port with three screws and three lock washers. Again, SawStop made this very easy to install. There's a little flange on the inside that lines up with the cutout and the housing to make sure that it all gets aligned perfectly. The next thing they want you to do is install this motor cover. It's important to make sure that you have all the wiring out of the inside of the housing before you put this on. You just line up the motor cover with the hinges on the side and you push a rod up from the bottom to hold it all in place. The next thing we did is install these wings on each end of the saw. These are really heavy. I suggest phoning a friend to help hold these while you screw them in from the bottom. The instructions say to just loosely tighten the bolts on these at first. Make sure you get a level and a straight edge to line everything up before tightening them. All right, after getting those loosely mounted, I went ahead and tightened those up. Took a little extra time to make sure it's perfectly level and flat on both sides. These are some pretty heavy pieces, so again, if you have some help, somebody to hold it while you screw while you bolt it in place, it really helps. This next step, while not hard, is a little bit tedious. We need to mount this box here. Uh, this is the power box, the power switch. And to do that, you have to mount these two screws up here at the very top. And it's not very difficult, but it is tedious to get them tightened down all the way by doing little quarter turns with an Allen wrench. This is a little hard to see, but the next part was attaching this little holder here for the wrenches that come with the saw so that they don't get lost. This other accessory holder on the other side holds your riving knife, blade guard, and other accessories that come along with the saw. Both of these are installed with just one screw. It takes just a couple of minutes. The next thing we'll do is take a couple of nuts, screw them all the way to the bottom of these feet, and put those feet on the bottom of that leg. And this is why you don't put the other bolt in the end of the extension table first. This bolt is actually going to go through the rail extension table, and if my leg would cooperate into that top hole in that leg and get attached on the back with a washer, lock washer, and a nut. The next thing we'll do is take these washers here and we'll put them through the bracket that we just installed on the other side of the rail and through the leg. And then we'll get everything nice and level and we'll bolt everything in place and tighten it down. Getting everything lined up and level and even on this extension table was by far the hardest part of this whole build so far. It took me probably 20 minutes to just finagle everything, make sure it was right and level adjust that adjuster screw in the middle of the table underneath, get the legs level. One word of advice, I did find that as I got everything a little bit tighter, things started moving into place like they should. So go around, tighten the bolts a little at a time, check your level, try to get it as level as you can, tighten them all a little bit more, and just keep working your way around the table. That worked best for me. The next thing I did is attach the guide rail ruler to the bracket there. It's attached on the bottom with seven screws. This stuff all comes greased up to help it keep from rusting, and it's all super heavy duty. So just be careful when you're putting this on so that it doesn't slide off onto your face. Ah! First part of installing the actual 
fence, putting on this handle that just screws on, and then you slide it in between the groove between the saw and the measurement rail here. Get it really tight up against that side, leave about a 32nd of an inch down in there between the saw and the rail and you tighten the bolt that's underneath here. Next thing I'll do is slide the fence down to the very end, make sure there's a 32nd of an inch between the guide and the blade here. I'll tighten this bolt on this side and then I'll tighten the other five bolts underneath to make sure this stays nice and straight and secure all the way down. Thanks for joining me today. That's where I'm gonna leave it off with this video. I'm not quite done, I still need to install the blade. There's a myriad of adjustments that I need to make with practice cuts to make sure that everything is square, level, and that these adjustments on the ruler here are correct so that when I'm making my cuts, they're accurate. So with that, overall, this took about three hours to complete for me. It's not overly complicated. The instructions are fantastic. SawStop has this down to a science. If you just read through them carefully and follow the instructions, I know you can do this. Make sure you subscribe down below. Please click that thumbs up to let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.